I am also giving away to one lucky viewer who is watching, sharing, liking the Sulky page, uh, liking the Sulky Facebook page, and also following us on YouTube, engaging with the post today in some way, I am giving away a $100 shopping spree to sulky.com to one lucky viewer. So make sure you are liking the Sulky Facebook page if you're watching us on Facebook. Um, that's really the only way I can contact you is if you have liked that page. And if you're watching from YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can subscribe to the Sulky page and get notifications for when we're going live and for when we're posting new videos and all of those good things. So 100 episodes. Yay. I'm so excited. All right. Applause. <laughs> so as you know, of course, we are doing this all for you. So I really thank and appreciate all of you for watching So What and engaging with us and bringing your questions to me so that we can troubleshoot any kind of sewing, quilting, or crafting issue you may be experiencing. So uh, uh, I see you all coming in and saying hello. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I know, I'm excited. All right, again, if you missed the beginning, I'll be giving away a $100 shopping spree at sulky.com to one lucky viewer who is with us today. All right, so I'll make the announcement tomorrow and uh, give all of you time to come on in, join the live stream, and uh, give me all of those hearts and thumbs up and great emojis and make sure you're commenting and putting your questions in the chat today. All right. So before we get started with today's great uh, project demo, um, I'm actually going to be showing you three cute projects today. Um, I wanted to let you know that the holiday headquarters sale has started. So look at these great sale deals we're having today. A lot of the things I'll be talking about today are on sale. So jot them down so you can go and shop at sulky.com. You'll get 35% off holiday thread, singles, and assortments, 35% off stabilizer assortments, 20% off gifts for sewists, 20% off blanks, 50% off sulky books, and 20% off holiday supplies. So there is a holiday headquarters sale page, and you can navigate to all of those great sales from there. So as you could see, the sale ends on November 8th at midnight. So get on in there and make your shopping lists. All right. Another thing I want to talk about before I get started is our Wilderness Wonder video cast. That is happening next Tuesday already. Whoops. Wrong picture. There we go. <laughs> the Wilderness Wonder Applique video cast. This is $5.99 to attend. And when you register, you will get a free embroidery design called Antler Antics. And you can use that embroidery design for a quilt label or to further embellish uh, the project that you create using our Wilderness Wonder Applique patterns and kits. This was designed by Ashley Huff of uh, Ashley Huff Designs. You may know Ashley from the National Sewing Circle or National Quilter Circle. She does great video tutorials and she's a really, really accomplished quilter. She designed these patterns that we will be going over during the video cast. There's a deer, a moose, and an elk. Let me show you those. So here is the elk in a finished quilt. Here is the deer in a finished quilt. And here is the moose in a finished quilt. So what we will be going over during the video cast is how to assemble these large scale appliques that can be the center focal point of a quilt, a wall hanging. I'm going to go over some different project ideas with you as well. The greatest thing about this video cast and this project really is that all of these applique pieces are pre-printed onto the fabric yardage that you get with your quilt. So you don't have to 
cut out all of those pieces, uh, find all of your fabrics, trace them all, mark them all, and then assemble. You will simply get the fabric yardage with all of the color blocks needed to create either your deer, elk, or moose. And you will also get a piece of the brand new Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web. That's right. I have been talking about this product for a little while now. Back in June, when we did our Hexies in the Hoop video cast with, or webcast with Xandra Shaw, we gave people who purchased that kit a special sneak peek into the Perfect Applique product. So let me know if you purchased that kit and you were able to try out the Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web. It is a really, really high quality, great fusible web, and it lasts. You know, sometimes you will use fusible web, and maybe one day you do all your fusing, and then you go back a couple days later to get the sewing part done, and you find that the fusible no longer is sticking to the fabric. Super frustrating. Well, Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web is just the same high quality that you know and love from Sulky Stabilizers and Thread, but it's in a really great fusible web. It's a lightweight fusible web, so it's great for something like a quilt where you want the finished project to still have that great comfy cozy feel and hand to it. So Perfect Applique Fusible Web is available at sulky.com right now, and it is also a part of the Wonder Wilderness Wonder Applique kits. So make sure you're purchasing the correct kit for the animal that you want to make. And then next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com, I will be doing an entire video tutorial for how these appliques come together. We're going to master some stitches on the sewing machine. And then I'm also going to go over some quilting tips for you. We're going to be doing some free motion. We're going to be doing some stippling and some micro stippling. But of course, you could quilt these any way you wish, and you don't even have to quilt it at all. So more will be revealed next Tuesday during the video cast. Make sure that you register, get your spot so that you get those reminder emails, and add it to your calendar so that you don't miss a minute of the live action. All right, so give me a thumbs up if you've already registered for that video cast. I can't wait to see you all in the wilderness wonder. All right. Thank you very much. I love Sulky's applique products. Superior quality. Absolutely. All right. Looking forward to it. Perfect. All right. Kathleen is saying, I purchased it but didn't get anything. Um, if you didn't get your uh, piece of perfect applique, um, also just know that was way before we launched the product. So there is no packaging with it when you got your Hexies in the Hoop kit. It would have just either been rolled up or a piece of that perfect applique with the other items in your kit. So maybe take another uh, look at it and make sure that you didn't mistake it for a piece of paper because that is the lightweight, sulky, perfect applique. All right. Lynn says, I spy a nothing but cake. <laughs> That's right. I have a celebratory cake today for the 100th episode. So I wish you were all here and you could get a piece of this beautiful cake. <laughs> all right. So let's see. I'm going to get started with our projects today because like I mentioned, I'm going to be going over three project tutorials. They're all extremely simple to make. And, you know, now that it's November 2nd, it's time to start the holiday preparations. Am I right? Um, maybe you have some between Halloween and Christmas decor up already uh, for Thanksgiving and still celebrating the changing leaves of fall and all of that good stuff. But since we are sewers and quilters and crafters, we need to start now to make sure that we have some new stuff to bring out with our holiday decorations. Whether you celebrate Hanukkah, Christmas, or something else, uh, we have you covered. So like I mentioned, as part of our sale that starts today is blanks are on sale. And I'm going to be showing you 
Um, kind of, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. You may use a blank if you want, or you can make something from scratch. Now, blanks are really, really great for gift giving, right? So I'll be showing you that as well. But before we get started, also dropped today at sulky.com is our brand new Santa Sayings machine embroidery collection. These were all designed by Sue Penn Designs. She's a fantastic fabric artist. Um, you may recognize her name as a free spirit fabric designer. Um, she's just lovely and lovely to work with and her designs are fantastic. So this is a really great suite of designs that we have packaged together in a collection called Santa Sayings. You can also purchase the designs individually if one speaks to you more than the others. You will get the designs in three sizes. So you essentially are getting 18 designs here, but really it's six designs in three sizes. Um, so if you go to buy the individual design, you'll get all three of those sizes. You can use a four by four hoop, five by seven hoop, or nine by 10 hoop or above. Uh, so lots of great options with this collection. Also this collection, if you want to purchase it with the thread palette, the 10 colors that you need to stitch out all of these great designs, the Santa Sayings palette comes with all of those designs as well. And since we're having that great sale, the palette is actually a little bit less expensive or a little bit cheaper than purchasing just the collection alone because we're having that great sale right now. So you can get all six designs in three sizes plus all 10 thread spools for less than it costs to buy the collection um, right now because of that great sale. I hope I said that properly. You are all with me. All right, so grab up the thread palette. You don't have to go searching for all the 10 colors that you need to stitch out these designs. Here are all the beautiful thread colors that come in that palette. So really great multi-purpose colors for the holidays and beyond. You got your reds and greens, creams and browns, and some teal and yellow gold colors thrown in there as well. Um, you might notice that it's really trendy right now and a lot of the decor that's coming out incorporates these really great teal colors as well. So it's a little bit more um, maybe modern take on the holiday decorations this year rather than just your traditional reds and greens. So little pops of color in there um, make it really, really cute. All right, so like I mentioned, we have some great blanks at sulky.com and they're all on sale right now. So my first project I'm going to talk about is a tea towel. Now, these are great for just decorating your kitchen area for the holidays, but these are some of my favorite gifts to give because you can basically gift it alone or you can grab some colorful spatulas, a rolling pin and a cookie sheet with your favorite cookie recipe, and you can kind of make a larger gift around a really great looking towel. So you can start with a blank. We have these basic white tea towels at sulky.com. They also come in this natural color. And then we also have some other styles of towels, which would work really great with the Santa Sangs palette. We have this plaid red and green holiday-ish towel. And we also have some towels that have a little bit of trim added and they're hem stitched on. So these would be great for bath towels, um, little fingertip towels, and they're a little um, sort of crisper or flatter than those tea towels that have a little bit of that wrinkly texture to them. So lots of options for blanks and you can grab those up at the great sale price today. You can get, um, there's a lot of colors in this colorful trimmed towel. There's this green color, which I thought was great with the thread palette we're talking about today. There's also a pink, a black, um, a gold. So you can grab up a different color for each one of your friends. And then when you're going to a holiday get together or dinner party, you can wrap up a special towel for them. Choose a different 
design from the Santa Sings machine embroidery palette for each towel. And that way everybody gets something a little different, even though it's pretty much the same. So great gift giving opportunities, but also just, you know, decor for your own self for the holidays. Whoa, excuse me while I make this um, image a little bit smaller. So you can start off with a blank. A blank towel is great, or you can actually create your own towel. And that's what I did for this tutorial, just to give you a little something different. Now to create your own towel, I just used Kona cottons um, for the base of the towel. So if you have a white, cream, natural color, you could even go with a uh, lighter color red um, or a light colored teal to kind of match with the thread palette. But you also are going to want to grab some trim fabric for your towel. This just really takes your otherwise plain towel and puts another aspect of handmade to it. So I went into my scrap bin, I found some holiday-ish fabric, and it was perfect for this thread palette. I also grabbed a leftover, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of it. What are the two and a half? Leftover jelly roll um, piece that I had from a different project. And I used that as a little bit of flange trim on the towel just to add a little something special. You could add some pom-pom trim into this seam or even some rickrack would be really cute as your trim piece. So think about those ideas. And even if you are embroidering onto a blank, you can still add some fabric trim to that as well. So here I have my Kona cotton and I cut it into the dimensions that are listed in our blog post. If you go to blog.sulky.com, you'll find all the tutorials for the holiday towel that I'm going over right now. So I made just a, I think it's maybe 16 by 22-ish um, towel. So it's not a huge towel. Sometimes you find those tea towel blanks are gigantic and I love those as well, um, especially for actually using it rather than, you know, just displaying it. Um, so the extra towel that you get is great for, you know, wiping your hands and whatnot and cleaning up. Whereas this is really more of like a towel to display. Um, of course, you could still use it and even use it as like a pot holder. But at any rate, you'll have two rectangles, one for your front and one for your back. The great thing about making your own towel is that you can cover up all of your back side of your embroidery stitches with your second fabric rectangle. Whereas when you're embroidering on a blank, you will see the wrong side of your embroidery, which is fine. Just use the same colors in your bobbin that you're using in the needle so that it still looks really pretty on the wrong side. And make sure that you're cutting those jump threads as you go along with your stitch out so that the wrong side of your towel um, looks just as pretty as the front. It may just be, you know, your, your lettering is backwards, <laughs> which is fine. You'll always know what the right side of the towel is. All right, so our two rectangles is, are what we are going to cut first. And for your upper rectangle, simply fold it in half widthwise, and then you're gonna fold the lower portion under that fold line in half. That's gonna be our center horizontal cross mark so that we can center our embroidery design. So then you're going to uh, fold it in half lengthwise. So now we've got our lengthwise and horizontal uh, lines to center our fabric in the hoop. Now, just to make sure I can see those, because, sorry, I don't know why all of my images are coming in so large. I, I resized all this already. Okay, so just to make sure I can see those lines, because, you know, I'm getting older and it's a little harder for me to see those fold lines. Now I take my friction highlighter pen, really like these highlighter pens, um, because they're a very light touch on the fabric. Um, rather than, let's say, a friction ballpoint pen, which I also like these for fabric as well. 
they all have kind of their place um, for my marking needs. But these friction highlighters are heat removable. So very easily we can remove those markings when our embroidery is complete. I just mark my cross marks um, with a darker highlighter pen so that I can really see what's going on. And then when I go to hoop it, oh my gosh, again with the big photos. When I go to hoop it, I center those cross marks using my hoop markings as a guide. Now notice in this 120 by 120 hoop, uh, my horizontal cross marks don't look like they're in the center of the hoop. That's why we use those cross marks to center our fabric because that's where our embroidery machine is going to go to find the center of the design. So make sure that your hoop is right side up so that you are centering it properly in the hoop. If you're using this as your guide, right? There are a lot of placement um, placement guides and placement tools that you might use. Maybe you have the machines that have the little so snowman stickers and that's what you use to center your design. Or maybe you have um, a template of your design that you printed out and that's what you're gonna use to center your fabric. So however you want to do it, um, to make sure that your fabric is in the hoop. Oh my gosh, why? Stop doing this to me. Okay, <laughs> so here is what my design looked like in the hoop. And you'll notice that, you know, in the previous photo, I was showing you a 120 by 120 hoop. Well, I actually decided after I took that photo that I was gonna go bigger with my design. So I used the design that is for the five by seven hoop and in my machine, which I use the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2, it's telling me to use a 260 by 200 hoop. So that's, I just wanted to let you know why there's a, a difference there. So we're gonna load our design into the machine and I'm using sulky 60 weight white bobbin thread with my design because for this, again, I'm going to cover up the wrong side of my embroidery with my second fabric square. So you can't see any of those bobbin stitches at all. So I used bobbin thread that most closely matches my towel so that it kind of blends in or disappears, um, you know, inside of my fabric or towel. All right, so again, if you are embroidering on a blank, you will want to, um, wind enough bobbins to get you through the design. So you'll have, you know, your gold, your teal, your red, etc. So every time you switch out your upper thread, you're going to switch out your bobbin as well. Again, so that your wrong side looks just as pretty as the right. So that's for people doing this on a blank. All right. So uh, you're going to embroider your design. Just follow the sequence chart. And then we're going to prepare our trim pieces for sewing on the lower edge of our fabric rectangle. And I really wanted to show you this image really up close actually, because I use the Clover Hot Ruler. And this little, great little invention is available at sulky.com as well. This little hot ruler allows you to sew even the smallest fabric strips at a absolutely perfect um, seam allowance or, you know, fold allowance. So you can fold up that strip and press it along the entire length of your little flange trim piece. And I just, you know, I started folding it in half and pressing it. And then I'd get a little uh, sort of wavy folded edge. And I was like, wait a minute, why am I not using the Clover Hot Ruler? So Clover Hot Ruler is your friend with small trim pieces or even larger hem allowances. Um, very helpful when you are pressing those and you want a nice crisp edge. Um, that crisp edge is what is really visible, you know, because it's kind of poking out from our seam line there. So we want that to be nice and straight and flat. All right. So that was a little bit out of order, but it's fine. It's fine. You're all with me, yes? Thumbs up if you're with me. <laughs> all right, so 
after our embroidery is complete, let's kind of rewind a second because my trim picture was out of order. Um, after embroidery is complete, we're going to remove our fabric from the hoop. And I forgot to tell you what kind of stabilizer I used for this. I used Sulky Fabrisolvi. I love using the water-soluble Fabrisolvi when I'm doing towels, whether it is a blank or I'm making my own. The Fabrisolvi completely dissolves in water when your design is complete. So even if you're using a blank, you can use Fabrisolvi. And then the first time you wash your towel, all of your stabilizer will disappear. Even if you're giving this as a gift and maybe you don't want to wash it before you give it to the gift recipient, you can simply trim that Fabrisolvi beyond the design perimeter and just tell your friend, hey, this is all gonna disappear as soon as you wash the towel. Speaking of that, I did pre-wash this fabric uh, just to account for any possible shrinkage that might occur after the recipient or after I wash it for the first time. So I did pre-wash all of this fabric so I didn't have any puckering that might occur, you know, after you wash it out and, or after you wash it and your fabric decides to shrink on you. Okay, so we will remove our Fabrisolvi and our embroidered towel from the hoop trim away your excess Fabrisolvi and lightly use the tip of your iron if you're using a friction pen to remove your heat removable marker marks, okay? So I was very careful to just use the tip of my iron and run it along um, where I use that friction pen. If you are using a different type of uh, marking utensil for your center cross marks, or maybe you didn't need to mark it at all. Um, if you just use those fold lines, that's perfectly fine. You may need to press your um, finished embroidery to remove any kind of hoop markings that you might have gotten during the stitch out process. I just like to try and keep my iron away from the thread whenever possible, so I will press it from the wrong side. Now, since you still have some Fabrisolvi attached do not use steam around that Fabrisolvi. It's going to shrink up on you because again, it's water soluble. And all of a sudden your design's going to look puckered. Now, if you happen to accidentally do this, as soon as you wash all that Fabrisolvi away, the puckering will subside and you can press it from the wrong side again if that happens. So just to let you know, but try to avoid it at all costs anyway. All right, so here you can see my Fabrisolvi that I have trimmed just beyond the design perimeter. So that is what the wrong side of the embroidery looks like. I always clip my jump threads on a towel project, especially if I'm working with a blank. All right, so now is when I needed to tell you about creating your flange piece. So, <laughs> Since it's all nice and pressed and um, it's just a inch and a half wide strip by the width of the towel. So you can see how when you fold it, it's just three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew your trim along the lower edge of your fabric, leaving that little bit of sort of 3D fabric strip extending uh, beyond your trimmed edge. So just a little, tiny little half inch or a little less is what you're going to be able to see. And that's what we want. Just a little something, something. All right, my goodness, such huge photos. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so now we're just sewing that trim in place. Again, using a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I'm using a quarter inch foot so that I can easily see since that strip is so narrow, I wanna be able to see what I'm sewing and make sure that my seam allowance is accurate. Ooh, there you can see my top stitching super up close. So um, you'll add your next fabric strip to that seam, um, to that flange edge. 
right? The raw edge of your flange and the raw edge of your towel. So once you have sewn that on, you'll press it to the right side, leaving your flange facing toward the towel embroidery and your colorful uh, fabric trim facing down. Press your seam allowances and then you'll top stitch along your trim seam just to make sure everything's lying nice and flat. All right, so now we will take our second fabric rectangle, which is going to be cut a little larger, right, than our first rectangle because we want it to also cover the trim strip. So you will sew this entire rectangle. See how it's covering my trim strip? And it's just a plain rectangle. You will sew all four edges and then along one side edge, just leave a little opening so that you can turn this puppy right side out. Before you turn it right side out, you'll want to clip away those corners so that you can have nice sharp corner points to your towel and nothing is a little nugget or curved edge, right? So we'll trim away those corners and then turn our towel right side out. Give it a little bit of a press. And there you can see my opening. I have folded those opening edges in toward the wrong side and pinned along the opening. Gave it a little bit of a press around the embroidery. Again, do not use steam around the embroidery because we've still got a little bit of Fabrisolvi left in there until our first washing. All right, so then we're just going to top stitch the entire perimeter, kind of like if you're making a pillow or pillowcase, right? So we're just gonna top stitch the whole perimeter and that's what's going to close our opening. So we don't need to do any hand stitching there and just remove those pins as you reach them. All right, then your towel is complete. It's just that simple, so easy and fun to do and you know, if you since we don't have trim going along the other side, you can really go into your scrap fabrics, see what matches your embroidery, and you can always swap some of these colors using the Santa Sayings palette. Let's say you want Eat, Drink, and Be Merry to be in red. That's completely up to you. You be the designer. Let's say there's no, you know, there's a different color, like this features a little bit of pink in the fabric print. So maybe I want to substitute pink for some of these stars. Entirely up to you and you can have fun with it and make it your own. So I found the cutest rolling pin ever, right? These are at Target right now and oh my gosh, it was so perfect for this little gift. So I thought I'll grab up a rolling pin, grab a really nice cookie sheet, you know, those heavy ones, and package this up with my favorite cookie recipe and boom, I have a gift done already for the holidays. So who wouldn't love to receive that? Um, you know, I think that my cousins would really love it as well. If I added a family recipe that maybe they don't have, you know, from our, our grandma. And this is just a cute, cute, cute gift to give. All right. So that is project number one. And that's right. I have more to share with you because... The Santa Sayings palette is so cute. So let me go back and just show you, for anybody who missed the Santa Sayings, here are the embroideries. So you can choose from Just Believe, Eat, Drink, and Be Merry is perfect for a towel. Um, below that says Santa, Please Stop Here. That's really, really cute for a wall hanging or something that you create to hang on your door. Santa's Sweetie. Really great on a t-shirt or pajamas. You had me at ho, ho, ho. I mean, how cute, right? And then the no peeking. That is actually an applique design. The tag of no peeking is done in the fabric of your choice. So I'm going to be showing you that as well. I really couldn't decide what project to go over today. So I'm just going to show you all three. Now, the caveat is that the only project that we have published to the blog so far is that towel project. So you can get all the how-tos for the towel project, the dimensions of fabric that you're gonna need to cut, um, and everything I just went over in blog form. So you can grab that at blog.sulky.com. 
Now, these other ones I'm about to show you, I've got a really cute onesie as well as a garland to show you um, momentarily. So if you're interested in grabbing all the full how-tos for those, they will be coming in the coming weeks on the Sulky blog. So you can go to blog.sulky.com and subscribe to the blog, and then you will get an email notification when those projects are released on the blog, as well as other fantastic tutorials that we will post on the blog too. So make sure you subscribe to the blog, and then you'll get notified when these tutorials are ready. But I know a lot of you will be able to figure these out on your own as well if you can't wait. So, all right, let me just make sure that I don't have any questions about the towel project. Um, great grab bag gift. Yes, if you have to do a secret Santa, well, want to do a secret Santa, or maybe you're going to give something to your neighbors, this is a great way to add to that gift. All right. And yes, the thank you, Cecilia, for helping out. The kind of fabric I used, you can either use, start with a towel blank, which are on sale right now at sulky.com. I did a Kona cotton solid for the main part of the towel. And then I believe the print that I used is an old Michael Miller uh, holiday-ish print. Um, and then just another Kona cotton solid for that flange piece. So honestly, any fabric is going to work for a little hand towel. Um, it might not be as absorbent as a um, blank, which is specifically made to be a tea towel rather than just fabric. But something like this is really more something that's on display. You might pat your hands on it or pat it on, um, you know, a wet pan or something like that to dry it off. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Rolling pin envy. I know. So cute. Okay. <laughs> everybody needs, everybody needs the rolling pin. Oh, Sue would like me to show that hot ruler again. Okay. Hopefully I can find the correct image to show you the hot ruler. So bear with me while I try to find it. These images go really small, which is why I have to get a little closer to my screen to make sure that I show you the correct image. I believe this is it. All right, here's the Clover Hot Ruler in progress or being used. These are also at sulky.com. So when you're grabbing up the Santa Sayings machine embroidery palette, grab up a Clover Hot Ruler. You simply place your fabric sort of on either side of the ruler and then you can press it, steam it, get it as hot as you need to. And it takes the heat. It's not plastic or anything. It's meant to be ironed over and pressed and all of those good things. So you can fold up hems, you can um, press super um, narrow fabric strips really accurately and nicely up against the edge of that hot ruler. And it's nice and marked for you. So you can say, okay, I need to fold this in half. So I need to fold it at three quarters of an inch and boom, your strip is done. All right. So let's get to our next project that showcases the Santa Sayings uh, machine embroidery palette and collection. This is our very adorable Santa's Sweetie onesie. And again, this um, really cute design would look great on an adult t-shirt. This would look really great on a pajama shirt. Maybe you like to make pajamas for all of your kids or grandkids. Um, I love making pajamas for my kids to wear on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. So this is just a really cute way to personalize a plain t-shirt that you grab up when you're getting your rolling pin at Target, grab up <laughs> a plain t-shirt and then personalize it. All right. So here we go on how to embroider a onesie. Now, if you have a new baby or know somebody with a new baby at Christmas time. I mean, so cute. All right, so how do we get in this thing and add embroidery to it? Here is how, with Sulky Sticky Plus. Sulky Sticky Plus is an adhesive backed paper release tear away stabilizer. So it's going to totally tear away when our embroidery is complete but we're also going to add a second stabilizer 
Once we tear away the sticky plus and our embroidery is complete, we're going to add some sulky tender touch, which is going to further stabilize those stitches throughout wearing and washing. And it's going to protect our little precious little baby from what might be scratchy stitches against their skin. So even if you're doing a t-shirt for yourself, you will want to put the tender touch behind it. We don't need anything scratchy rubbing up against us, especially with something like pajamas. But really, honestly, any t-shirt needs tender touch. So we're gonna start by hooping the Sulky Sticky Plus in the hoop that we have chosen for the design. Now this is a size nine month onesie. So I chose the smallest of the three sizes of the Santa Sweetie design, which is the one that fits in the four by four hoop. So you will want a relatively, you know, you don't wanna go smaller than, or larger than a four by four hoop when you're doing something like a onesie or something really small like this where we've gotta get in there and, you know, make sure that our embroidery doesn't catch on any other part of the onesie. All right, so hoop the sticky plus. Another tool that's really great when you're doing what I call hoopless embroidery, which means we're not going to actually hoop the onesie, we're only hooping the stabilizer, and then we're gonna stick the onesie to it. So that's what I call hoopless embroidery, even though we're still using a hoop, we're just not hooping the item. All right, so this is our sticky plus slitting pen. I love this tool. And as soon as I discovered that Sulky carried it, I was like, first off, please send that to me immediately. It's relatively inexpensive. It's like six or seven bucks. It comes in this little handy little carrier and it has a little rubber tip on the really sharp end. Now, what's great about this tool is that yes, the end is really sharp, but it only goes through the paper backing. It doesn't go through the stabilizer. So when you're scoring that paper backing to reveal your adhesive stabilizer so that you can stick your item to it, you don't wanna use a pin or scissors. Um, I mean, you absolutely can, but you need to be very careful if you're using those items because they can go right through the stabilizer and then you'll have to rehoop another sheet of stabilizer, potentially wasting the, the one that you accidentally sliced through. Now ask me how I know this because it used to happen to me all the time. I get overly excited, I guess, and I get heavy handed with the pen or the uh, scissors and then there we go, I've ruined my stabilizer. So sulky slitting pen to the rescue. A lot of <laughs> number of you are saying, I love it, and the hot ruler. I love the slitting pen. I'm always talking about them, right? Leslie got one in her mystery box. That is awesome. So very, very great tool if you love using Sticky Plus like I do. And yes, Rosemary, it is called the Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. All right, so we're going to score our paper um, using that pen within our inner hoop. Oops, I lost my place. Let's get back to it. Okay, here we go. So once we have scored it, then we can lift up that paper backing, peel it away to reveal our sticky adhesive inside of our inner hoop ring. Now we can stick our onesie to it. So you'll want to take your onesie and make sure you mark where your embroidery is going to go. So I just chose right in the center, about an inch and a half from the neckline seam, from that lower edge of the neckband. Um, so that's where I wanted my embroidery to go. You can go a little bit lower than that if you want, but I find that's a really great placement, you know, to make sure it's kind of in the center um, when the baby is wearing it. So again, I used my trusty friction highlighter to mark the center cross marks of my design. Again, you can choose the marking method that you prefer, but it's very important when you're working with a onesie or something tubular like this. Um, we've got other blanks that are similar to this, like pillow blanks um, that maybe have a zipper or an opening along one edge. 
you really want to mark where your embroidery is going to go because we're going to kind of embroider this inside of this tube. So you really won't be able to double check your embroidery placement without really having those markings or an embroidery template or something like that. So make sure you have it marked in some way. Then turn your onesie right side out. So you can see now it looks like this sort of tube and I have placed my uh, marked area on my sticky stabilizer using my hoop markings again to make sure that that design is going to stitch out exactly where I want it to. Now, make sure, we need to make sure that our onesie is out of the way of the stitching field. We don't want our needle to accidentally go through these other layers that are along the outside perimeter. So, depending on the size of your onesie, you may be able to use wonder clips or binder clips to um, kind of clip it to either that excess stabilizer that is along the outside of your hoop, or you might have hoop clips you could use, but I actually don't use any of those things. I make sure to sit with my machine, watch where the needle is going, and I have my finger on that start and stop button so that at any time when I see where the needle is moving next, I can stop the machine, move some more fabric out of the way of that particular area of the stitching, let it go again, and then if it moves again and I need to readjust, again, finger on the start and stop button so that I can easily sort of babysit this onesie and make sure my needle isn't going to penetrate an area of this onesie that I don't want it to. So make sure you stick with your machine the entire time. So here is our design is loaded and ready to go. You can see it is for a 120 by 120 hoop and important to double check with your machine screen during the stitch out and say, okay, this is the part it's going to stitch out first. So I'm going to make sure that that area of the intended design is completely free and clear of any extra onesie fabric. All right. So here I have started the stitch out. Again, make sure that excess is away from the movement of the arm and anything else that it might be coming into contact with. So begin your embroidery. Um, with this, I also cut my jump threads as I go on the front and back of the onesie. So after it stitches out the Santas in that red color, I will remove my hoop from the machine, clip all those jump threads, turn it over, clip all those jump threads, put it back on the machine after I have re-threaded and continue with the design. That may seem a little bit tedious, but it is such a time saver in the end when you wanna make sure that those jump threads are cut. Because even if, even though we're adding that um, fusible tender touch to the wrong side of our embroidery once it's complete, which is going to you know seal up all those stitches, we just don't want the added bulk of all those jump threads on the backside of the design. So make sure you're, you are clipping those as well. So here is the finished design, how it looks from the front. And we still are in this tube, right? So now we need to remove our onesie from the hoop and tear away the excess Sticky Plus stabilizer. Make sure you get in there and tear away all the little bits of stabilizer. And then here is what the tender touch looks like. And I like to cut the tender touch using either a scallop blade scissors, which I just happen to have, or you can use pinking shears. And that really just gives you a nice pretty edge to your tender touch. Um, even though it's on the inside of your garment, that's a nice little touch and it's going to contribute to the longevity of um, your item once it goes through multiple washings. Cause you know, this is a onesie. It's gonna get washed a lot. <laughs> All right, so trim your tender touch so that it fits uh, the embroidery perimeter. Mine's a little bit large for the design. You could get a little closer if you wanted. Um, so that's an, up to you. So once it is in place, you wanna make sure that bumpy side, which is the fusible, is touching your embroidery wrong side. And then you will just fuse it in place using a low to medium temp iron 
just until it's nice and fused and attached. And that is really, again, what you want to do for any t-shirt embroidery that you are working with. And there is our finished onesie. Again, so easy. We barely had to do anything for this except for hoop our stabilizer and make sure that our stitch out and that our needle wasn't hitting the onesie. So again, you can package this up with a little baby Santa hat and maybe some, you know, holiday themed toys um, for the new baby or for the baby's first Christmas. And I mean, this is just so adorable for that Santa photo. I just... I can't even. So I hope you all enjoy making that. And again, this can go on an adult t-shirt as well. These designs come in three sizes. So you could stitch a little bit larger design on a, uh, you know, adult size t-shirt or pajamas. That would be so cute for the Christmas morning photos. So um, it doesn't have to be just for baby. It can really be for anyone. Anyone can wear this. All right. Here it is and looking so great with that cute little uh, garland. Again, I found this garland in all these great colors. It had the teals and the blues and all these colors that we're featuring in this thread palette. So that got me thinking as well. You know, with this cute little garland, let's make something for that. So I thought that little no peeking um, machine embroidery design would be perfect for sort of an addition to this cute wolf, wolf felt garland. So this is the little garland and it's about, let's see, it's about five feet long. So you can find these everywhere right now. Um, wool felt or just little pom-pom balls would work for your garland as well. And um, we're gonna make a little mini quilt to wrap around this garland and then we can hang that super cute no peeking sign either on the lower edge of our tree, you know, when you have all the gifts out and you have this cute little sign that says no peeking, or you can hang it on your mantle above maybe where your stockings are hanging. Um, just so cute. So here we go. I mentioned that no peeking design. Let me go back to the design collection. The no peeking design in the upper right corner here, that gift tag is an applique. So you can use whatever fabric you want for that applique piece. Now I would kind of steer clear from a busy print because we want to be able to read the lettering and we also want to be able to see the cute little snowflakes and gift boxes. So we don't want um, the fabric print we choose for that applique piece to compete with the rest of the embroidery. So I chose to use, here's my garland. I chose to use a solid fabric, but it has some metallic sparkle in it. Uh, so, and you might be able to find these just as a fat quarter or something like that. And then you can incorporate your sparkly solid fabric into your cornerstones or maybe use it for the binding and get a little more mileage out of it. So I added my little mini quilt to the garland and I'm gonna show you how I did this. It just made some little loops and they wrap around to the back um, and are just secured with some buttons. So very cute way to display a cute little mini quilt. You might even have a pot holder design that you like and you can use that, right? And just instead, or maybe you could use this as a pot holder once you are done, <laughs> up to you. But I really wanted a way to hang this up and put it on my mantle for the holidays. So I just thought this little wool felt garland was just the ticket. Okay, back to our applique part of the design. So you can see the very first thing that the design is gonna tell you to do is to stitch the placement for your applique fabric. So you are going to sew this directly onto the fabric. Now for this, I am hooping my Kona cotton, the white that I used for the background, with a piece of Sulky Soft and Shear. Soft and Shear is a really great stabilizer for quilting cotton fabrics and it's a cutaway. So it's going to stay with this project 
until the end of days. And I love using soft and sheer or a permanent stabilizer when I'm doing something that's going to be hanging up because I don't want, you know, over the years or over time, I don't want this to start sagging because I'm hanging it. So that additional cutaway stabilizer is going to continue to stabilize the whole project throughout its entire life and it gives you a great stabilization during the embroidery. So in my hoop, I have the soft and sheer and my Kona cotton that I'm using for the center square of the mini quilt. And again, if you want the full instructions for this, they will be posted to the blog in the coming weeks. So make sure you are subscribing to the Sulky blog so that you will get notified when this post um, goes live. So we're starting with our center square and the first color sequence is going to be the placement stitches for our applique. So it will sew that gift tag line and then we are going to position our applique fabric so that it completely covers that applique line. And if you want, you can use a little bit of Sulky KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive. You could put this on the wrong side of your gift tag fabric. You could see I have a little bit of metallic sparkle in mine. And put that right over the tacking stitches. Now, you may not have to use the KK2000, but it just gives you a little extra security so that nothing shifts when it goes to sew the next color sequence, which is the tacking stitches. After the tacking stitches, we are going to trim away that applique fabric as close to those stitches as we can get without nicking them. So in order to achieve that, these applique scissors are really what you need. So this is gonna make your life much, much easier and pretty much ensure that you're not gonna clip through those threads. Um, it allows you to get really close to the stitching line without cutting through it. So you will trim away that upper applique fabric layer and now you have your gift tag applique. And you can also see there's that little hole of the gift tag. If you want, you can leave that. You can leave your fabric there. Um, or you can use my trusty favorite little squeezer scissors, which I love to have for clipping my jump threads. These, as you can see, they have like a curved point. So when you put these on your fabric in the hoop to trim your jump stitches, See that curved edge makes, your, makes it pretty much foolproof for you to trim away your jump stitches without these tips coming in contact with your actual fabric. And it's so funny that I'm just showing you this right now because I'm noticing a jump thread that I missed and it is between our little exclamation point and the dot beneath it. So. These little squeezers are perfect for getting in that little hole and removing your applique fabric without nicking anything else. So you can kind of get in with the tip of the curved squeezers and just give it a little snip and then trim away um, just like you can see in this image here. So along with your duckbill applique scissors, you might want to grab some little squeezers if you don't have something like this already. These are my absolute favorite. I have three pairs of them all over my sewing room. Okay, uh, just discovered the squeeze scissors. How did I ever live without them? I know, I'm telling you. <laughs> all right, so let's get back to our gift tag applique. So after this point, you will put your hoop back on the machine because you probably needed to remove it to trim away all of that fabric. We're gonna put it back on the machine and it's going to sew the satin stitches that are around the gift tag. So that's going to completely enclose the raw edges of your gift tag. And that's how you do applique in the hoop. So once that is secured, you will simply follow the rest of the color chart and complete the design. Then when your stitch out is complete, you will re remove your fabric and that soft and sheer that's now attached from the hoop and trim up 
your center square. Honestly, this can be whatever dimensions you want it to be. I started off with a much larger rectangle than needed so that I could hoop it um, and then trimmed it down after. So it measures about, it's going to be about seven and a half by six and a half, seven and a half wide, six and a half tall is basically what I trimmed my piece to be. Now, if you want to you make a larger mini quilt and use the large size in your nine by 10 hoop, you just need to make sure you trim that up so that you have a nice little border around your finished design. And then you will uh, cut your border rectangles according to your center trimmed rectangle. I added the little cornerstones and honestly, the only reason I did that is because the fabric print that I found in my stash was not long enough to uh, make basically a simple frame um, around my center embroidery. So to overcome that, I used that sparkly solid fabric that I used for my applique as my cornerstones. And then that gave me a nice little framed out mini quilt. And it brought that turquoise um, color from the embroidery into the rest of the design. All right, so now we're going to sew those cornerstones to a couple of border pieces, and then we will sew them to, or actually, this is the border piece that does not have a cornerstone on it. So along the upper and lower edges, we simply have our borders, and then along the sides, that is where we have, or where we're going to add those cornerstone pieces. So now you will put those right sides facing, making sure that your cornerstone seam lines line up perfectly with your center focal part, focal point, <laughs> center square, center rectangle, we'll say. So pin that nicely. You can see I've pressed open my seams so that I can see them really well and make sure that they are lined up. Then you will sew those and press everything away from center so that, especially if you're using a white background fabric like I did, we don't want our um, seam allowance to be showing um, or showing through um, that center focal rectangle. So we're gonna press everything away from center. And now we're going to make our quilt sandwich. So I have a backing fabric, I have some batting, and then I have my finished mini quilt front. And I use, again, our KK2000, and that's how we're gonna secure our little quilt sandwich. This is such a small project. There's really no need, if you're using the KK2000 to spray baste, you really don't need to add additional pins or any kind of, um, of basting stitches um, to the work because it's so small. Um, but if you decide that you create your quilt sandwich and you're going to set this aside and maybe come back to it in a couple of days to do your quilting, you might find that your KK2000 has dissipated because it's air soluble. That's another great thing about it. It just dissipates into the air after about, oh, 24 to 48 hours. So if you're going to come back to this later to do your quilting, you may find that you, you will need additional uh, spray basting. So um, if you decide you wanna do the quilting later, maybe just wait until right before you're going to do the quilting to secure those layers. All right. And now it's simply time to choose what kind of quilting you want to do. You can do some echo quilting um, beyond that center design and just follow sort of the perimeter of that in concentric uh, shapes um, until the entire thing is quilted. You can quilt in the ditch of those seams. Now I decided that I was gonna do minimal quilting on this because it's so small, again, you don't need a lot. And I, again, used my trusty friction highlighter pen to mark my quilting lines to make sure that they were um, exactly about a half inch from my borders. And I just really like my little 
intersecting corners here along the cornerstones. And I thought, you know what, less is more and that this was going to be great. I also chose to use one of the colors from the Rayon Santa Sayings palette for my quilting stitches. I used the gold color and that kind of brought in the gold from this little motif as well as complemented the print fabric that I decided to use. All right. So here I am quilting along those lines and using that gold thread. And I also use the same gold thread in the bobbin. You can really see it well along the back of the work. So after we do the quilting, we need to remove our fabric marker if that was used. Um, so just whatever marker you use, remove it in the way that it needs to be removed. Again, this, I just use the tip of my um, moderately hot iron to remove those markings. And then you want to trim up your little guy so that every, all of your edges are nice and even and ready for some binding. But before we bind it, we need to create our little hanging loops so that this can loop around an existing garland. Um, all right. You can also add this as, um, to like a bunting um, if you want to create your own. You can actually just use um, some pre-made uh, double fold bias tape and sew the open end together and you can wrap your uh, mini quilts around that. So if you don't have a felt ball garland, there are ways around it. All right, so these are our hanging loops. I used the same fabric that I used for this little flange piece and I cut a little fabric strip, sewed the long edge and then turned it right side out and then trimmed it to my little loop sizes that I need. So as simple as that. And then we're going to fold our loops in half and I just secured them with a couple of wonder clips. And then we're going to put them where they need to go on the upper edge of our mini quilt. So I simply measured the upper edge, cut it into thirds, put my little loops in place and wonder clipped them. If you don't have wonder clips yet, add those to your must have notions along with your applique scissors, your squeezers, your hot ruler. You also need some wonder clips and we have them in two sizes at sulky.com. All right, so clip those in place and then we're just going to baste them just for some extra security. You could see I crossed mine a little bit because I wanted an open loop. I didn't want my loop to be um, just folded right in half, right? I wanted an open loop so that it can go around my button along the wrong side. So I had to crisscross the ends just a little bit. So just baste those in place so that they're not going anywhere. And then you'll add your binding strip. And your binding strip is going to make sure that those raw edges are completely enclosed. So when you fold your binding to the wrong side or to the back um, and secure it, your hanging loops are nice and attached. All right, so now you will simply fold your loops. Let me just take this off of the garland so it's a little bit easier for me to show you. Take your loops and fold them to the wrong side of your mini quilt or the back and mark your button placements where they need to be. These are, I think, three quarter inch diameter buttons, I wanna say. So fold it to the back and then just hand sew your buttons in place and you're done. So take your garland or your bias tape or your bunting or whatever you are going to use to attach your little mini quilt and fold it in half to find the center. Um, you know, of course, if you don't want this along the center, just put it wherever you like. But I folded mine in half to find the center. And then I simply wrapped those loops around a few of um, or next to a few of the pom pom balls. And then you just secure with your buttons and hang it up. I mean, I know these are the cutest designs. I really love them. I think they will be 
a great addition to your holiday decor. Again, there are six designs to choose from in the Santa sayings. This is just a sampling of projects that you can make using the Santa sayings design collection. And again, since our thread assortments are on sale, Buying this thread palette is actually cheaper than buying the machine embroidery digital collection alone. So you're basically getting all of those designs for free by purchasing the thread palette. And then you'll have all these great uh, holiday themed colors um, at your disposal for lots of things to stitch. And actually, I'm going to be showing you this in a couple weeks on So What, but I did a Hanukkah towel. And I used the same palette for the Hanukkah designs. I used all the teals and the gold and the off-white to stitch out all of my Hanukkah um, themed embroidery designs for that project. So it's a handy palette for lots of things that are going to be on your holiday uh, making, gift making, or decor making list this year. So here is what the palette looks like on the website when you're looking for it. And again, you will get all six designs in three sizes included with purchase of this palette. Now you can also just go and get the digital embroidery collection, or you can get these designs individually. And once you create your sulky.com account, those designs will go right into your account so you can go and retrieve them at any time. If you're like me and you forget where you've saved them on your computer, <laughs> you can go back into your account and grab them up and um, stitch them out. All right, so that is the Santa sayings. I hope you really enjoyed those tutorials. Um, I'm going to go through and make sure that we have addressed um, any questions that have come in about the onesie or about the mini quilt or about the towels. And again, don't forget, our blanks are on sale right now. So it's a great time to stock up on blanks for gift giving. And this palette is perfect for adding something personal and a little something special to an otherwise plain blank. All right. Oh, where did you find that cute garland? All right. So this garland I found at World Market. Um, I have also seen them on Amazon. Um, so they're kind of all over the place right now. This seems to be like a trendy way to decorate this year for the holidays. And it's got the perfect colors for this thread palette. It has the golds, the blues, the teals, the reds, even some purple and pinks in here. So, you know, you can use this for any time, not just the holidays. Um, so it's a great little, cute little thing. Like your idea to use the buttons. I know we all have these big button jars. Am I right? And I hardly ever use them. And it seems like they just grow and grow and grow. So I thought this is a great way to go into your button jar, find some cute buttons. They don't even need to match. They can just, you know, be two different buttons and it would be equally as cute. Okay. Great loop tip. <laughs> and Kathy uses wonder clips more than pins. I think I am getting to that point as well. Wonder clips are so handy. Evelyn says, like how you chose your fabric and thread colors. Thank you. Again, I just went into my fabric stash, found some holiday fabrics, and I kind of designed the dimensions of my mini quilt based on what I had on hand. So again, I will be posting the exact tutorial with the dimensions I used. If you want to copy that and create your own mini quilt garland, that will be coming in the in, in the coming days on the Sulky blog. Or you can simply stitch out your embroidery, trim it up, go into your stash, find some, some borders that work, and make it your own. Okay, what type of presser foot did you use when sewing the quilted lines? I just used my standard presser foot. Um, you definitely could use um, a, a stitch in the ditch or a, a ditch quilting foot. Um, a lot of brands call them different things, um, but those are the presser foot that have a little flange on them. So it's really easy to follow your lines because that flange just goes right down the line where you marked it or along, you know, your, the ditch of your seam um, if you decide to stitch in the ditch. 
So those are really great. I also have the most wonderful uh, feature on my sewing machine and it is a laser line. So I simply press this button and, oh, my machine is hibernating right now. But anyway, I press this button and I get a little red laser line down the center of, um, or where my needle position is. And that is super handy. So, uh, <laughs> I hope that answers your questions. Okay. Oh, Sharon, can you see the back please? Um, I think I'm not sure which project this is, um, talking about. So I'll just show you the back of everything. So here's the back of the garland and you can see my quilting stitches. Um, and I use that yellow gold thread. So it looks just as pretty on the back as it does on the front. Might need a little bit of a press, um, but at any rate, there's my, this is the quilting that I decided to do, leaving the center um, without any stitches so that it really pops. Um, there we go. And then I don't know if you were talking about the towel. The back of the towel is completely, um, covered by our second fabric rectangle. So that's what that looks like. And then the back of our onesie is entirely enclosed in that tender touch stabilizer, making it nice and soft and completely covering all of that stitching and also giving us some great stability to support those stitches over time. So this center part where we have the embroidery, since we have fused that tender touch, isn't stretching really anymore, but everything around it is. So we can still get this over the baby's head. We can still have movement in our shirt and it doesn't look bulletproof. Look, see how soft and nice that tender touch is? That is what you need. That's what you see in, um, you know, maybe you have a logo printed on a fleece jacket um, maybe you have, you know, a design on a purchased shirt, that stuff on the wrong side is just like this tender touch. So that's what the back of everything looks like. Hopefully I answered the question. <laughs> Marianne says, how do you find the sulky blog? So if you go on your web browser to blog.sulky.com, you will find the sulky blog and you can subscribe to it. There's a little button on the right hand side of the blog screen that will say subscribe. And all you need to do is enter your email address and hit that subscribe button. And then you will be notified via email anytime that we post a new blog, a new tutorial, a new pattern, um, or these other projects that I'm going to post in the coming days. All right, are the directions for the towel online? I've never covered the back of a towel with embroidery. The directions for the towel have been posted on the blog. So at blog.sulky.com, it will be the first one that comes up um, if you're watching today live. <laughs> so you will find the holiday towel that I went over with all the directions, all the dimensions for cutting your fabrics. This is currently on the Sulky blog right now. So that's where you can find that one. And again, make sure that you subscribe to the blog so that you can get notified when we post the onesie as well as our cute little garland project for today. All right. I am making linen towels. Can I use cotton for the back or should I stick with linen? Um, meaning you're making towels out of linen for the front. Um, honestly, I would use the linen for the back, but... Um, you know, maybe everybody else can weigh in on that as well. I would use the same fabric on the back um, so that it has the same feel, um, so that it washes the same, so that it reacts the same when you're using the towel and has that beautiful look to it on the front and the back. So that would be my recommendation. All right. <laughs> Lacey, Lacey just ordered that Target rolling pin. I am telling you, I should be a spokesperson for Target. I lo love me some Target and that rolling pin is the best. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show everybody the rolling pin. I mean, it's adorable. It's also like 
a little bit shorter than a more traditional rolling pin. So it's great for kids too. Um, and I think the center is, um, it's made out, it's like ceramic or something. So really great for like pie doughs and things that need to stay cold. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Target because we are talking about Sulky today, but I'm happy for you and your rolling pin because it's adorable. <laughs> Lots of people subscribing to the blog. I appreciate that. It's a really great resource for lots and lots of projects and product tutorials as well. Everyone's saying yes. Use linen on the back also. Okay. I always, I always like it when you all corroborate with me. <laughs> Use the same fabric, same front and back. Okay. Perfect. And yes, that linen might shrink more than the cotton um, or... You know, even if you pre-wash it, there could still be some shrinkage after the fact. So linen for the back as well. Okay, perfect. Oh, is Kona cotton the same as quilting cotton? So Kona is really just kind of like a brand name for this cotton fabric. Robert Kaufman makes it, Robert Kaufman Fabrics. Um, so yes, Kona cotton is a very good quality fabric to use for quilting. Um, so yes, you could use whatever you use for quilting cotton, you could use for your towel. Um, but like I said previously, it may not have the same kind of absorption qualities um, if you plan on using the towel a lot. So you may want to go to sulky.com and grab up some kitchen towel blanks, tea towel blanks, hand towel blanks. Those are going to have the, the really great absorption qualities that you want in a towel. So this is really more of a decorative way um, to create a towel that you're maybe going to hang in your kitchen and display um, and just use here and there for kind of patting dry your hands or something like that. And yes, Jennifer, hopefully I just answered that question. Is there a more absorbing fabric that would work? Um, you could definitely use a terry blend uh, for something like a bathroom towel, um, but you will want to use a topper for embroidering that. Um, you can either use the Sulky Solvi or depending on your fabric content, you could use the heat away clear film, but you will want a topper if you're doing a napped fabric or a more absorbent um, terry blend. Okay. Or again, grab up a blank that is specifically for toweling and that's going to be more absorbing for you. All right. Thank you, Yvonne. I subscribed to the blog a few weeks ago and love it. Fantastic. How to subscribe once you are on the blog. Um, I'm going to see if I can share. Well, it does not want me to share my screen right now. Let me see what I can do to try. But on the right side of the blog, if you go to blog.sulky.com. Um, hold on just a moment. And let me get there. There we go. The Sulky of America blog. All right. So over on the right hand side, it says subscribe to our blog. Are y'all seeing that? It says, don't worry. You'll only receive an email when a new post is published. Enter your email and hit the little subscribe button. And that's all you need to do. And all of a sudden you are subscribed. So just that simple. Okay. Oh, great idea from Krissa. You can do another design on the back of the towel and have yourself a reversible towel. That is a great idea. You could basically repeat what you do on the front, add a different design, put it on the back, and then you have a reversible towel. That would be a great way also to like maybe you create a Valentine design on the other side. And so after the holidays, all you have to do is fold your towel a different way. And there you have your Valentine uh, towel to display. And it's one less thing you have to put away after the holidays. So that's a great idea. All right. Using towel blanks, they're great kitchen towels. No lint, that's a good point. And again, all blanks are on sale right now at sulky.com. So when you are grabbing up that hot ruler, your applique scissors, your squeezers, your sticky plus slitting pen, your KK2000, grab up some blanks, put your Santa sayings 
uh, thread assortment in your cart and you will be good to go. Barb says, what are blanks? What a great question, Barb. Um, a blank is an item that is specifically made for machine embroidery or other embellishments. So a lot of blanks, like for example, when you go to our page of blanks at sulky.com, you will also see some embroider buddies. These are stuffed animals that are specifically made so that you can take the stuffing out all in one little enclosed little pillow and you can embroider on the stuffed animal. Um, there are pillow blanks that are envelope style closures on all four corners or all four sides. So you can open up the pillow entirely, embroider the entire front, and then basically put it back together in a series of folds um, over an existing pillow or over um, a pillow that you create out of fiber fill or by stuffing it. So a blank is something that is specifically made to accept machine embroidery and to be easily hoopable. Sometimes you will go to a store and think like, oh, I'm going to grab up this pillow and just add embroidery to it. And then you find there's no opening in the pillow. There's no way to get this pillow on your hoop for embroidery. So that's why we have a whole section of blanks at sulky.com. We've got um, jewelry holder blanks that have a zipper that almost zips entirely open so that you can embroider on the top part of the, the jewelry case. Um, we've got towels galore, pillows. We've got um, little uh, jute pouches that make great gift ideas. So there are tons and tons of blanks to choose from. And again, these are made specifically so that you can easily get in there and add your embellishments, even if it's applique, handwork, or machine embroidery or quilting. So really great. All right. Lots of you just subscribed to the blog. That's great. Oh, Marianne, I apologize. Right. On your iPad or on your phone, that um, subscribe button for the blog may look a little bit different for you. I forgot that there's different displays based on different devices that you're using. Um, so just scroll on down and find the subscribe to our blog um, text, and then hopefully you can get in there quickly and um, figure that out and add your email. Do I need to pre-shrink the blanks before the embroidery? Um, for the towels, I have done it both ways actually, and I did not find, um, you know, it's the, the kitchen towel blanks that we have that are those plain ones, um, these right here, they come in white or they come in natural. Um, I did not experience any shrinkage with those after washing, but a lot of the times I'll just wash it just to be on the safe side. Um, you can look at the fabric content as well when you receive the towels um, and kind of use your best judgment for pre-washing. But anything that I know is going to withstand a lot of wash and wear, like these onesies, you know, this is probably gonna get washed in hot water um, and, you know, needs needs some stain remover, <laughs> things like that. So I definitely wash this before I add the embroidery to account for any shrinkage or any sizing that might um, be in the fabric. Um, and so for kitchen towels, bath towels, that kind of thing, yes, I'm always going to wash that before I add the embroidery. All right. Love the reversible towel idea. Put Happy New Year's on the back. Now, Denise... This is a wonderful segue into what I want to leave you all with today, which is our New Year's Eve Sew Along event. Now, first off, thank you all for still being with me here today on our 100th episode of So What. You can see I have some celebration um, tools right here at my disposal today. So, Thank you to Sulky for, um, you know, supporting the So What and, um, you know, having me be a part of this show is just really one of the highlights of my job, honestly. So uh, let's see here. This New Year's Eve, we are partnering with Sally Tomato for our second year in a row to bring you the Aurora Bag Sew Along taking place on New Year's Eve at noon Eastern time. 
that is when we will begin. It is a four hour sew along event where we will be working our way through this brand new bag by Sally Tomato. Um, the Aurora bag, it's a slouch style bag with two different handle options, a strap and then some handles, faux leather accents, tassels, high end finishes, and really, really cool ice dyed fabric. You can choose from the purple or blue ice dyed fabric or the red and cream, which has these greens and purples thrown in it as well. And each one comes with all the hardware that you need, um, your webbing for the long strap, your faux leather for your accent pieces. And these are just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous kits and bags. Um, my kit is on the way so that I can sew along with you all on the day as well. I will also be showing you how to create some freestanding fun sewist patches in the hoop of your embroidery machine. These are three patches and you will get all three designs for free just by signing up for the New Year's Eve sew along. You will also get the Aurora bag pattern delivered digitally completely for free just by registering for the New Year's Eve event. So you will have the patch designs, you will have the bag pattern, all you will need is your kit and to show up on the day of the event and join us live for the sew along. Did I also mention that we will be having some giveaways? That's right, on New Year's Eve, we will be giving away tons and tons and tons of prizes. If you joined me last year for New Year's Eve, you probably won a prize because we had 20 door prizes throughout the night to celebrate 2020. So we may just have 21 uh, prizes this year, we will see. But our grand prize for the evening is a Faf Ambition 610 sewing machine. This thing retails for $999. I know. So register today and you will automatically be entered into the drawing for the door prizes throughout the day. Um, last year when we did our New Year's Eve sew along, we started at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time and we ended at midnight. And it was kind of our own form of New Year's Rockin' Eve. It was our New Year's Sewing Eve. And it was such a blast. Um, we dressed up in the 20s theme and our bag that we made had a lot of fringe on it and it was really, really fun. So this year, we are going to do things a little bit earlier. Um, like I said, we're going to start at noon. So it's kind of like a new, noon Year's Eve. So if you're in a different time zone than Eastern time, you will need to set your calendar so that you join us at 12 p.m. Eastern time, right? So for some of you, that's going to be 8 a.m., etc. Then we will sew for four hours making our bag, and then that frees you up for the rest of the night. If you want to call it an early night and not make it till midnight, that is perfectly fine. If you want to take your bag out on the town and show it off, that is also perfectly fine. Um, instead of doing our 20s theme, we are going to have a pajama party. So you can wake up, grab yourself a cup of coffee, have some brunch, and join us in your pajamas or come as you are, be as comfortable as you wish, and we will be working our way through that bag. Someone just said, where do you register for New Year's Eve? Well, Julie, I put our um, link to register in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing it, make sure you hit the little see more button in the description. Um, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook, you'll have to hit see more and then you'll see the whole post with all the links for everything I talked about today, including registering for our New Year's Eve event and registering for our Wilderness Wonder applique video cast happening next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on our education site, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. So you'll find the links for registering for both of those events, as well as the links to all the great products I talked to, to talked about today. And don't forget our holiday headquarters sale. We've got super deals going on right now on almost everything I talked about today. So make sure that you're grabbing those up um, is this New Year's Eve sew along for Facebook only? No, it is not. In fact, it's not on Facebook at all. 
Our New Year's Eve event is happening on our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. Not to be confused with sulky.com because they are two different websites. I know. So many things to do, so little time. I second that. But I hope you make time to spend New Year's Eve with us. I will be with Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato. We're going to tag team the sew along so that you all can sew in real time with us in whatever you would like to wear, eat, bring, you do so, and it'll be a blast. The kits are on sale right now until November 15th. The uh, event is on sale right now t- until November 15th. So make sure you register before that cutoff date so that you get the great deal on the event and the great deal on the kit as well. All right, Cheryl just signed up. So happy you'll be joining us. It's going to be a really, really fun time and a great way to spend your New Year's Eve and get you kind of excited for everything else that you have planned that evening. All right. Well, again, thank you all for joining me today and for the last 99 episodes of So What. I really, really appreciate your support and love having you here, learning about new products and ways to really take our sewing to the next level. I always learn something from you and I hope that you learn something every Tuesday as well. So we're going to celebrate for the rest of the day on 100 episodes. Yay! And I'll see you next week for another So What? Followed by our Wilderness Wonder applique video cast. So after the So What? ends next week, we will head on over to the education platform and meet over there for our video tutorial all about our deer, elk, and moose appliques. So I hope you enjoy, or I hope you join me for that as well. And have a great rest of your day. I hope you are inspired to go out and make something fantastic. I'll see you all next week.